This conference will now be recorded. He served as a former advisor for Lake Development Committee, BBMP, as a former state co-convener of Information Technology Cell and former executive committee member for a political party, Yuva Morcha, Bangalore City. With this, I hand over to Mr. Chandrakant to start today's session on consumer rights and protection. Over to you. Thank you, Indraji. So good evening, everybody, and uh, welcome to this uh, presentation. And I'm sure uh, with this lockdown happening, there's lots of uh, things happening around us and uh, things getting better day and day. So hopefully from tomorrow, we should see a better uh, situation in the country. So with that, uh, thanks for the introduction, Indraji. So just a few things to add to that uh, small introduction that she made. So basically, I'm an IT professional. I'm a Bangalorean. I'm a Kannadiga, born and brought up in Bangalore and uh, been living in Bangalore for quite some time. And uh, I work for a major IT company. It's a big IT company in India and in a very senior leadership role. I've been around uh, 20 years in the IT industry now. And I've been uh, working for different different IT companies, almost four to five different IT MNCs uh, throughout my career. And the social service has been my passion because, um, uh, you know, even my uh, forefathers have been involved in a lot of social work. So that's flowing through my blood. So that has come uh, in our family to do social work. The whole concept of social service is the art of giving, like uh, Indraji rightly mentioned. You must have heard about art of living, but this is a different concept called art of giving. So when you start giving, uh, from whatever you have, a little bit of things that you earn for your livelihood, and then you take out some uh, some of that uh, set it up to the society, and then start distributing that to the people around you who are less so privileged, you will see that sense of self-satisfaction that you're doing something great to the society. You're helping your uh, fellow citizens to also improve their standards of living. So the whole concept of uh, consumer rights movement uh, came up uh, when we started about thinking on how we can actually focus on the social activities uh, as professionals we all can get together and uh, do something to the society and uh, as you know there are lots of uh, ways of doing social service so bengaluru navanirmana party has been one of the forefront organizations involved in this uh, concept of social work so ultimately it's a political party and then they want to reach out to people gain more votes form governments that's absolutely a great idea to have and i know that this particular party has a lot of professionals within them just like our consumer rights organization where we have most of us are professionals working professionals uh, in fact um, so thanks to uh, them, thanks to BNP Party and Indraji for moderating this. Thanks to Swamya for setting up this call and giving me an opportunity to talk to you all. Uh, so just to give you a quick background about uh, why this thing came up, the consumer rights movement. So you must have heard about this uh, women rights, child rights, and different different kinds of rights people have in the society. But consumer rights has been one area where uh, probably not many people would have focused uh, since the time we got independence. So almost like for 60, 70 years, uh, people had this kind of thought at the back of their minds that uh, there is something that we need to do for consumers. But nobody really came up with some kind of an organization or an idea or an act or a law as to how we can actually help consumers. When it comes to human rights, or child rights and animal rights also, a lot of organizations which are very active, working and they're doing great things to society. But somehow in this space, uh, it is a kind of a road which is uh, very uh, less traveled, I would say, because not many people actually came forward to do something in this space, whereas lots of other things happening in different different social organizations for different themes. For example, if you want to work for uh, you know, old age people, there are lots of organizations. If you want to work for children, underprivileged children. If you want to work for farmers. If you want to work for poor people. There are different, different organizations. So consumer rights is more of a very technical subject, and I don't think anybody can just start an organization with, uh, with this theme because it involves a lot of technical things to know, a lot of laws to understand, uh, a lot of things to know about how this thing, whole thing works, how to implement this, and those kind of things. The whole concept uh, actually stands on the principle of uh, helping consumers to get what they truly believe is the value for money that they spend, and also to make sure that in case if they get cheated by shopkeepers and vendors, how do we help out to them? Um, so uh, with that as a thing in the back of our minds, a uh, set of professionals, almost like a couple of years back, we sat together, uh, basically, Professionals, when I say they're all uh, you know, different, different working professionals, IT professionals, and you know, different kinds of professionals working in different organizations, different companies, came up with the thought as to uh, starting a new organization, uh, a social organization, a selfless organization, a completely voluntary organization with the motto of service to society. And we all sat together, we brainstormed as to what exactly we could do uh, in terms of the gaps that we have in the society. So we did a market research on how things are happening uh, within our state, within our country. We got to know that there are lots of NGOs, lots of political parties, lots of other organizations working. A lot of them are doing selfless work, but there are a lot of selfish organizations as well, which work for money, which work for different different uh, needs. 
Um, so our concept is fully on the motor of service. So we don't have any expectations of earning money through this uh, whole movement that we have started. Um, so just, just giving back to the society is the only uh, thought process that we have when we started this. So when we all uh, intellectuals start, started uh, thinking about something that we could do to the society, that's when we found that there's a huge gap in the consumer rights section where you know when people buy something, they absolutely have no idea how to actually uh, get value for their money. And if they get cheated, where do they go? How do they go and fight for their rights? So we thought that's a road which is less taken, less traveled, and less thought about. So we thought we should do something in that space. So that's when this idea came up. Uh, so a lot of people suggested that we should do something in this area. And this is completely an apolitical organization. We have absolutely no association with any political organizations. Though we have people in our organization who support different, different political parties, but that, that's their personal choice. So we don't actually you know, get into any kind of politics through this organization. We only work for the development of consumers. Absolutely, otherwise there's absolutely nothing that we uh, you know, align with any of them. We are very much apolitical. We are very much neutral. We are very much unbiased. So that's the whole concept of uh, this uh, organization. Um, so with that as a background, I just want to take you through this small presentation and then give you some insights about uh, what this whole thing is all about, consumer rights, consumer movement, consumer protection, and those kind of things, and uh, how it will benefit, uh, benefit us overall. And uh, the key takeaway, I would say that uh, you know, once you go through this presentation, I'm sure you will have some kind of an idea as to, as a consumer, uh, how would you actually think uh, better in terms of when you go out and then uh, deal with people, deal with businesses, deal with things, deal with products. How do you actually make yourself a better person to invest your money? And, uh, you know, all of us, uh, we all earn uh, money through our hard means. So we do a lot of hard work to earn money. Uh -huh. And um, when you actually... I'm sorry? Yeah. Huh? Is that a question? It's just cross because someone's mic is unmuted. So. Okay, so I would request all of you to kindly go on mute. And um, Indraji is the moderator, so you can post your questions to her. And so this, this will be more of an interactive session, so you can actually stop me. As and when I proceed with different slides, you can stop me and then you can ask me questions. Or we can do a question and answer session at the end of the presentation as well. So approximately, we have scheduled this for one and a half hours. Uh, so depending on the time, uh, we will make sure that we cover most of your questions. And we want to make sure that we stick to the schedule. I know it's a Sunday, it's your personal day, so all of you are busy with your families. Uh, so we don't want to take much of your time, so we'll stick to the schedule. And Indraji, please do stop me. Uh, even during the middle of the presentation, I can uh, take up questions, so it should not be a problem. Sure, so with thank that, you so I would, much. Uh, You're the only person, I think, acting as a presenter as well as the moderator. You're making really my job very easy. Oh, thank okay. you so much. Okay. Uh, Thanks. Nice career. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, so uh, the, the concept uh, that we're going to talk about today is about uh, consumer rights and production. That's a whole uh, topic for today's discussion. So uh, I'm moving to the next slide. So you can see that there are quite a few table of contents and topics that we'll discuss today. So first is the overview. We'll talk about what is consumer and uh, how do we, the different definitions of what exactly consumer rights means. We'll go through that. We'll talk about uh, consumer rights organization, which is uh, which is our organization, Karnataka State Consumer Rights Organization. We'll give you a quick quick insight about what we do. And I think about the presenter, that's basically myself. Indraji has already given an introduction, so let's see if anything else needs to be added to that. And then we'll talk about consumer rights. We'll talk about consumer protection. And uh, you know, you know, before you buy something, what all things that you need to think of? That's called before and then during. So when you go to buy something, what are the things that you need to take care of? And then after. So when you buy things and afterwards, uh, you know, if you get into some issues, so how do you reach out to people and uh, different organizations to get some help? So that's called before, during, and uh, after. And a lot of consumer laws of late that the government has come up with. Um, so we'll see when was the first uh, law which was enacted by the government. And uh, there have been two versions for that. We'll see what are the different versions of the consumer laws which are prevailing in our country. MRP is the most common thing that you must have heard, that you must have seen in your day-to-day -day life. So it's called maximum uh, retail price. So we'll see what this is. And this is the basic thing that we all need to remember uh, when you go out and buy something. Um, so the last part is going to cover about uh, the redressal and the relief. So if something goes wrong, how do you get uh, some kind of relief and redressal for your issues? And then uh, there's a consumer day as well that uh, people celebrate all across the world and all across the country. We'll see what are those consumer days. And uh, uh, we'll also talk about uh, how do you, uh, how, how, do, how can you align yourself with the organization? There's a, uh, there are some details about our organization that we'll uh, post uh, and present it in the last slide. This talks about uh, how, do you, how can you contact us and if you have any issues, how can you reach out to us. So I can also share details about our organization. 
So it's going to be the brief contents for today. And we hope to cover this in the next one and a half hours. So that's about the table of contents. So we'll move on to the first slide. Um, so in case if you feel that I'm fast, I'm kind of rushing or I'm slow, anything that you want uh, for me to change, I'll be open to that. So please uh, continue to give me feedback about this presentation and then the way I'm going to contact. So based on that, I can also change my way of doing this uh, during the course of this presentation. Okay, so let's see some basic definitions uh, of what this whole consumer rights movement is all about. So we start with the definition of consumer. Um, so a consumer is a person or a group who intends to order uh, and uh, you know, order or orders or use purchase goods, products, services when you buy something primarily for your personal use, social use, family, household and similar needs. So we all have to understand this uh, name consumer very closely because um, when I've been uh, on the field talking to people, um, there's a lot of people who come and ask me, uh, do I qualify to become a consumer? Uh, I would say that every single person is a consumer. Because there's a very interesting incident that I had, a person who was a shopkeeper who runs a shop came to me and asked me, you're saying that uh, you know, you're going to take action against shopkeepers and vendors. So I'm a shopkeeper. So do I really qualify to be a consumer? So uh, I was like you know, wondering what kind of a question this is. So it, it really made some sense. Uh, you know, it had a lot of logic in it. So uh, we gave it a good, good thought, deep thought about that question. So what actually happens is everybody is a consumer according to our thought process that we have. Because let's say there's a shopkeeper who runs a restaurant and uh, he's the boss, he runs a restaurant. So he's a shopkeeper and in case if somebody, you know, if he doesn't give a good service, then we go and, you know, talk to him and you know, try to get things sorted out with him. Um, so when he, when this person who is the boss of a restaurant goes out and buys a cloth or buys a TV or buys a refrigerator, he becomes a consumer. So the shopkeeper is now become a consumer when he goes out and buys something else for his family. So which means every single person, including a shopkeeper, is a consumer. So if people think that they're not shop, they're not consumers because they want to shop, they're shopkeepers, they're vendors, and our whole movement is all about against the vendors or against shopkeepers, that's absolutely false. Because we're not there to harass any vendors or shopkeepers. For us, even a shopkeeper is a consumer, even a vendor is a consumer because they might be running a particular business, but they, when they go out and buy something else for their family needs or for their day-to-day -day needs, they become consumers. So in a way, I would say that every single person is a consumer because at some point of time, you go out and you buy something. So irrespective of whether you're a professional or you're, whether you're a business person, whether you're a shopkeeper, you're running something, you're a owner, you're a boss, anything that you are in your uh, professional life or your personal life, you become a consumer when you step out and go buy something. It could be a small item, it could be a big item. So that's when you qualify to be a consumer. So absolutely no doubt that every every single person is a consumer. At some point of time, we go out and buy something. So we, we become a consumer. So that's the definition of a consumer. Uh, the other one is about consumer rights. So basically, it's a right that you have uh, about the information that you would get about the quality of the products that you buy, uh, the potency, the quantity, the purity, the price standards, and all those things. You have a particular right when you go out and buy something. You need to make sure that you buy the right, uh, right quality products. You need to make sure that it's pure, it's good, uh, the price is okay, and the standard is good. So those kind of things. So these are your basic rights. Just like you have this fundamental rights in a constitution when you're qualified to you know, get certain things as a privilege uh, when you take birth in India as an individual. Similarly, consumer rights as a consumer, when you go out and buy something, you have basic rights that it should be of good quality, it should be of you know purity, the price, and everything should be within a particular norm. So that's why we have this consumer rights option that has started. So when things go wrong, uh, we also need some protection. Um, so consumer protection is all about giving you uh, some benefits, some redressal, some safeguarding options. Uh, when you buy things, uh, goods, services, it can be product, it can be services, both. Uh, so a product is basically when you buy a product or an item, a service is something that you take a service, which is not a product basically, which is a, which is an act of service given by certain organizations to you, certain companies to you. So our uh, movement just does not talk about buying things as a product, but also it covers things like a service. Uh, somebody's helping us, somebody's giving us some kind of a service and the service is not good, we can still, you know, use our movement to uh, talk to them as well and cover those aspects. Uh, so it will give you protection against unfair practices in the marketplace. So there are some ethical business standards that each of us need to follow. Just because you're doing business, you can't be just like, you know, going and uh, doing anything which is against the law or against the minimum things that are prescribed by the government. And uh, you need to follow certain acts, you need to follow certain things which are within the framework of the consumer rights and protection. So nobody can go and overcharge. Nobody can go and just kind of charge what they want. So a typical example I would say is that you all 
would go out to movies and malls. Unfortunately, malls are closed now, but I heard that next week the malls are going to open. So if the malls are going to open, there'll be movies and uh, the theaters which are going to operate. So if you go to, if you step into a mall, and then if you go and buy a popcorn, and along with that you get this combo of you know the the cold drinks and the coke and all that, okay. you would realize that you would. Probably... I'm sorry. Is there a question? Was, was there a question? Maybe again. Okay, sure. That's right. Yeah, so I'll, I'll move ahead. Right, so uh, there was a. So I want to quote an incident. Last time, last time, I have a meter. I think there are some options where the yeah. organizer yeah. can uh, mute everybody. That we can mute. Yeah. Please mute. But uh, does the organizer have an option to mute all the participants? I think some tools. Yes, please go, go ahead. This is. Can you hear me? Yes, Chandra, yes. we are able to hear you. Yes. Okay, thanks. Yeah. So, uh, how many of us would have realized that when you buy these things, it is probably more than the cost of the ticket of, I mean, the price of the ticket of the movie. So, uh, there has been a great kind of uh, apprehension in this particular space because what you're buying in a mall is very much above the MRP. And they kind of charge of it for all kinds of ACs and uh, you know the the lighting and the other things that they actually use there, and all those things gets into your MRP. So it's not at all an MRP; it's much much above the MRP. So cost of the water bottle that you see inside a mall is probably like 60, 70 bucks, wherein it's outside around 10 or 20 bucks. So uh, absolutely, there's no regulation you know that's happening in these kind of places, and this has been a big issue. And uh, you know, there's nobody to protect consumers when you go to a mall, when you go and buy these things, when you go to a movie. So there was a lot of hue and cry in this space. Uh, so last year, uh, sometime back in 2019, I remember that uh, Maharashtra government actually came up with a very good uh, consumer protection law, which uh, regularized the prices of all these items when you go to a mall. So which means people there, you know, um, uh, organizations working out of uh, working for consumers there. And different consumers came out uh, with a memorandum with the government saying that you know the prices have to be regulated otherwise it's all like it doesn't make sense when people are selling almost two three times the mrp and also they wanted the home food to be taken inside the movie and then you know, for, let's say there's a senior citizen who wants to go to a mall and uh, you know have food they can't be you know eating those things which are available in the mall so they wanted home food to be taken inside the mall so there was uh, some kind of a uh, some kind of a government order which came up from the maharashtra government uh, which said that they can, you uh, know, senior citizens specifically can take home food inside the theaters and they can sit there and eat. And the prices of all those items have to be regulated. They fixed a minimum price for that. It was little above MRP, but yeah, the government came up and said that, yes, you know, the malls have to be protected. They spend a lot of money on that. So they came up with some pricing guidelines and those kind of things. So we actually took that as an example. We went to the government of Karnataka. That time it was Congress and JDS, which is ruling in Karnataka. I'm talking about last year. Uh, before the current BJP government came. Um, uh, Mr. Zamir Ahmed Khan was the Minister for Food and Civil Supply. So we went to him, we gave that you know, copy of that government order. He said we should do something like that in Karnataka and protect the consumers. So all this came under uh, consumer protection thing. This is an example that I'm quoting of how we can actually you know, protect the consumers using various laws, customized laws from different states to state. Uh, so it's a very important topic. We'll have a particular slide. You will see different laws under this. There's a separate slide on that. There are two different laws in the country. We we'll look at how the consumer protection laws are prevailing today and how they're helping consumers. So that's a small thing that I wanted to talk about. 
and finally we have consumer courts uh, most of you are aware there are consumer courts available in india and there are three, three types of courts that we'll see later in the presentation one is at the national level and one is at the district level and also at the state level so different uh, courts available for your redressal so these are special courts uh, you know in india uh, it deals with cases related to consumer disputes conflicts and grievances so these are like you know you must have heard about ombudsman ombudsman are uh, you know certain third party it's not basically third party because they're in they're kind of an interface so when you have when you're working on uh, when you have bank accounts and then if you have a conflict between your bank and yourself there are ombudsmen uh, from the reserve bank of india who will uh, help you out for a dispute to resolve the disputes to help you out similarly uh, consumer courts nothing but the, you know, the unbiased ombudsman i would say because they help you out to solve your disputes to solve conflicts they take your grievances and you know, they give you justice um so uh, you must actually look at times of india newspaper probably like every sunday or every once in a week probably on wednesdays or sundays there's a article which comes called consumer is king this particular article focuses on how uh, people have been winning cases in consumer courts and they are quoting uh, different different case studies and use cases of how people have gone to the consumer courts for what all kinds of services which the companies have failed to provide them and the latest one is the last week's one where we must have heard about this VLCC, uh, uh, VLCC is another company which works on you know health and fitness. It was a very popular in country, and uh, this was a case in Mysore where uh, a guy who actually took a treatment of around seventy thousand for hair transplant. Um, now this guy was losing hair, and he went to the uh, organization, the company, and said that I want uh, he wants to fix his hair. And uh, you know, they gave a service of around seventy thousand. They put him a new hair. They did a transplant. And I think within six months, it started coming out. So he started losing hair again that he got transplanted. So that's when he went to the consumer court. Uh, court. He had spent around 70 to 80,000 on this treatment. Uh, the case went on for two years and uh, finally he won. Uh, the court uh, ordered that the company has to pay him 1.5 lakhs plus some mitigation charges and other things. So it took almost two years for this particular person to win the case. So consumer courts have been very, very friendly. And uh, I would say that 90% of the cases which goes into consumer courts are going to be ruled in favor of the consumers. And there are 10% cases which fail because uh, the one of the main reasons why the consumer courts would not uh, deliver judgment in, term, in, in the favor of consumers because when you're not submitting the right documents, when you don't have right evidences, when you don't have the right receipts and bills of the service that you've got, and if you don't have the right things uh, that you produce to the courts, that's when you lose the case. So that's when the 10% of the cases, but 90% of the cases, as a consumer, when you buy something, whether it's a service or a product, it's very, very important that you need to preserve bills, your receipts. Bills are basically your warranty cards, your bills. Uh, so everything that you buy should have a bill. I'm not saying that you buy something for five, 10 rupees and you demand for bill, but when you're buying a considerably big product, you need to uh, demand for the bill and you need to make sure that you preserve it for some time. You need to make sure you look at the warranty card and keep it for some time. You need to make sure that you have all the documentation that, the, that it comes with the product, keep it for some time. So sometime when I say it could be as long as six months. So that's when you actually make sure that you're very much covered and safe, even when you have to approach the consumer good. Um, so if you're wondering what Karnataka State Consumer Rights Organization would do when we have a consumer court, uh, we will also talk about that in the coming slides. Um, so why, why, why do people have to come to an organization like consumer, uh, Karnataka Consumer Rights Organization? Why can't they just go to the consumer court? That could be an interesting question some of you have. I'll also cover that. Uh, but these are some basic things that as a consumer, everybody of us, each of us have need to know. So what is a consumer? What are our rights? How do we protect ourselves? And in case we need to go to a court, what are these consumer courts are the four basic things that we thought in our view is very important for a consumer to know. Um, so that's about the overview. I'll move on to the next slide. Okay, I'll take a minute probably to talk about uh, Karnataka State Consumer Rights Organization. Um, so I would say it's a premier organization because it's all driven by a lot of professionals. So, and when I say professionals, you know, educated professionals, with you know, a lot of degree holders, a lot of engineers, a lot of doctors, lawyers, academicians. We just heard about uh, Ms. Asha Sultana from our team uh, who talked about herself. She's an academician. So lots of such people are there in our team. Um, so it's a social organization. It's a selfless organization. We do a lot of voluntary work. It's an NGO and uh, completely managed by educated professionals like me and uh, who are working towards the cause of consumers. So our theme is basically consumers. We, uh, so we are very much focused on consumers. 
Um, so our vision, we have a, we do have a vision and a mission. So our vision is to become Karnataka's leading social organizations in the space of consumers with the objective of helping consumers. So we're going to fully focus on consumers. When I say consumers, again, like I said, it's everybody, each of us, every single person. And uh, with the objective of helping consumers get justice whenever they get cheated. And we see this nothing but getting cheated by vendors and shopkeepers. That's our vision. So becoming Karnataka's leading organization, leading social organization with the theme of helping consumers to get justice. And this is only this is going to be only applicable. Uh, this uh, this situation only arise uh, of helping consumers only when the consumers are getting deceived by vendors and shopkeepers. Otherwise, um, uh, you, would, you would probably have uh, most of you would also probably have a very wonderful experience doing a lot of shopping. So when you go to a mall, when you go outside, you buy things, you buy TV, refrigerator, anything that you want to buy to your home, you buy a lot of good clothes and, uh, and especially festival occasions, you buy many things. So I'm sure you would have wonderful experience as well. And a lot of uh, you know, wise people in our country who actually go and do wonderful shopping. When I say wonderful shopping, it means they know what to buy. They know how much to spend. They know what to see when they buy. And when they come back, they also know how to validate what they bought and they know how to use it as well. So these are some things that we do. And uh, I have seen quite a few wise people uh, who are very intelligent in the way they do shopping. When they, when they buy things, they use a lot of their brains. Um, so uh, so that's great. And uh, so most of us do that. Uh, so, But otherwise, in, uh, even if you take a lot of precautions when you go buy things and when something goes wrong, we'll see how we get protection for those situations. So that's our vision. So we do also have a mission. So our mission is to encourage dedicated professionals to join the consumer movement. So we are uh, we are in the process of expansion. Uh, we do have teams at the Karnataka state level. We do have teams at the Bangalore district level. Bangalore is considered as a district, as, uh, as one particular entity or district. Uh, so we have a great team of professionals in the Bangalore team. We have a set of office bearers at the Bangalore level and also at the Karnataka state level. We are now rapidly expanding across different different districts. Uh, and then uh, we want to uh, set up teams across Karnataka state. We are in the process, but unfortunately, because of Corona, we have just kind of put things on hold. But uh, we are going to restart our activities hopefully from June and then uh, start the travel and other things that we need to do to make sure that we reach out to every corner of the state. Uh, so our mission is to uh, have more and more professionals join us and uh, in serving the society selflessly. So selflessly is a tagline that we kind of focus. Uh, many people come to me and ask, okay, what's the benefit of joining KCRO? I would say the benefit is that you would get a platform to do social work. Uh, you would be among dedicated professionals. You'd be a, among a lot of good people around you. You would be getting an opportunity and a platform to align with the right set of people. And if you have the thought process of giving back to the society, a KCRO is probably the right organization that you would align with. Because uh, if I've seen a lot of people who have an intention to do social work, but they do not know where to go. So they would look around and see a lot of NGOs around and uh, you know sometimes they go to an NGO and then they look at things not going as well as expectations and some of the NGOs would work for just earning money and some of the NGOs would just be there with namesake and they don't do anything. Uh, so they get stuck. These people, you know, when they take a, a bad choice of joining an organization, which is not as per their thought process, they go get stuck there. So that's when they start you know, feeling that they're in the wrong place. So KCR, a consumer rights organization that we are into, gives you the right platform. And as there are absolutely no monetary benefits, when people have those kind of uh, you know, thought process, we don't align them with this because we don't allow people to earn money from our organization. It's all about giving back to society. We don't we don't make any money out of this whole uh, organization that we have. In fact, we all professionals, we get together, we pull in our own money, uh, we do social activities on our own. Uh, we do raise sponsorships whenever there are events. A lot of people join us and they sponsor us. A lot of organizations, a lot of companies give us sponsorships. We raise sponsorships, and sometimes when we don't get sponsorships, we all pull in our own money to help people. So selflessly is the tagline that I kind of focus for everybody who wants to join our organization uh, for addressing consumer issues, protecting consumer rights, creating awareness. So awareness has been one other aspect that we've been focusing on. So we talk about consumer protection, consumer rights, but awareness is another area that our organization has been uh, focusing on. And for that, we have roped in a lot of experts uh, within the industry. Uh, who know a lot of consumer laws, who knows about consumer acts. We do have our legal panel. We have our legal advisors who have studied these consumer laws in depth. And they've also been taking cases and then helping consumers to win cases in consumer uh, courts. So uh, one other aspect of our uh, organization also to help create awareness among the public. And uh, we started this in 2019. Before that, uh, I was another organization 
uh, which is a national level organization with a similar kind of a theme. In 2017 and 2018, I was aligning myself with that organization. But later, I moved out of the organization and we wanted to create something very customized to Karnataka State. Uh, whereas the other organization uh, before 2019, where I was working with, uh, when I say working, it's again a voluntary thing. Um, so this was more of a national organization and it had a lot of national thoughts and big things to do. Uh, but when uh, we realized that we wanted to do something very specific to Karnataka state, that's when uh, some of us moved out and then we branched out to start our own organization called Karnataka State Consumer Rights Organization. And we started this in uh, January 2019. It's been more than a year now. It's almost like one and a half years since we started this. And uh, currently we have uh, 100, more than 100 uh, registered members and we have more than 250 general members. So there's a difference between registered members and uh, general members. And probably in the last slide, when I talk about uh, uh, how to reach out to us, I'll mention what you know how you can align us, uh, how you can align with this. Um, and then and now we are rapidly uh, expanding our put, put, footprints and foothold in different different districts of Karnataka. So that's uh, that's a few things about uh, our organization. Okay, about myself. Uh, Indraji has already given me given the introduction. So I've been in the IT industry for the last 20 years. I'm still working. I'm still an employee of a big IT company. I'm in a very senior leadership role in that company. And before to that, I was into different different organizations, different companies, different multinational companies, you know, American companies. Um, so I have done my uh, engineering in computer science uh, from Bangalore. And uh, I passed out uh, with distinction almost like 24 years back. I did my engineering. And I've also done my postgraduate diploma in sales and marketing. Um, I've been in the social life for almost like 20 years now. Since the time I joined the IT industry, I've started uh, you know, working for the society uh, in a very small way those days. I'm talking about 20 years back. But now, again, later as I grew in my professional life, in my personal life, I also started growing in my social life. So it's almost been like you know 18 to 20 years uh, of my social work in the in the society. But you would not see me more in media. You would not see me more of a guy who will come in newspaper. You will not see me more of a guy coming in news channels, television, no, because I'm still involved in an IT company and we are bound by a certain corporate laws. So you would not see me more in uh, more in the public space, but I'm very much in the background. Uh, I do a lot of things uh, in the background and I allow my team who are full timers to go out and to be the front end. But whereas I sit in the back end and you know, manage a lot of things. Uh, so that's when that's why you don't see me very much in the society or not so popular face within media. Um, so I would want to stay that way because I'm bound by a certain corporate laws until the time I'm, I'm an employer from an IT company. Uh, but otherwise, uh, apart from that, I have been uh, in a leadership role in 20 different organizations. So I think Indraji, I have shared my profile, a small thing, talks about 20 organizations probably. And there are two more organizations uh, which have given me different roles this week. So I'm going to probably you know, share that as well next week. Uh, so it would be like 20 plus organizations uh, I'm into. Um, so I hold leadership roles there. I hold voluntary roles in different different organizations. So that's about me. Uh, so basically, I'm Bangalorean. Like I said, I'm born in uh, Bangalore. I'm a Kannadiga. I live in Bangalore. I, uh, I have a wife and then I have two sons uh, at my home. And then um, I've also got uh, won several awards by different different organizations. And one of the... Yeah. Uh, so we'll further move forward. Uh, we'll also discuss about the laws, Chandrika. The laws yeah. pertaining to... Yeah. Yeah, go to the next slide. Okay, so what you see here is basically uh, there are uh, almost eight different rights that a consumer can actually enjoy. And uh, for the benefit of consumers, you can see that uh, the first thing talks about right to safety. Uh, on the left hand side, if you see the first right that we are talking is about right to safety, we'll also look at what these rights are. The second one is called right to choose. The third one is called uh, right to be heard. And the fourth one is called uh, right to be uh, informed uh, then we have right to a healthy environment then we have right to redress uh, right to consumer education and right to basic needs so these are the eight different rights that we have uh, we will talk about what these rights are in a minute okay these are the eight different rights very important aspect uh, when you talk about consumer rights this is, these are very technical we all need to know what this is so if you are planning to do something in consumer rights space you need to know about the different consumer rights of late uh, there have been i think three to four different new rights which have come in but uh, we are not going to be focusing on that right now they are still being discussed debated so uh, probably if they get approved officially that will add up to these eight different rights that we have uh, but I, as of now the standard rights that we have in the industry is around eight the first is right to safety, which means, uh, you know, when you buy a product, it should be safe. It should not be hazardous. It should be good. So that talks about the safety of the product. 
So right to choose is the second one. It talks about uh, the way you will have different options. So nobody can give you one option and say, okay, this is the only thing that you that we have and need to buy this. You should have a right to choose different things, different goods and services. So that's when you have, let's say when you want to buy a small product, you will have, you will see that the different companies which have the same kind of a product. So that you can go and buy the best thing that you think is right for you. So that's your right to choose. So right to be heard is about, uh, you know, to be heard about decision-making process related to consumer interest. So when you want to, you know, when you want to talk about something, you need to be heard about so that this particular right gives you the option to be heard about, not just like people enforcing things on you, but as a consumer, your voice has to be heard. So this right allows you allows your voice to be heard by others. Uh, the fourth is about right to consumers. This right is to be fully, fully informed about the performance quality of all products. So when you buy a product, you need to know the exact working nature of the product. Nobody can put you in a black box and say, take this product. You need to understand how it works. You need to make sure that how it, you know, how it can operate, how it will benefit you. And those information has to be mentioned. So that's when, when you have a product, when you buy, you will see a lot of uh, how to use things, the product description, the details about the product and those kind of things. A right to healthy environment. Uh, there's a fifth one. Uh, the right of every citizen to live and work in a clean environment, safe environment, ensure that generations also have access to clean atmosphere. So we all have, we all are living here in a city, and then we need to make sure that our safety and our environment is good, clean, to make sure that uh, we live in a very good, conducive atmosphere. So we have every right to live in a healthy atmosphere. So it, it is the job of the civic authorities and government to make sure that give us right, that give us the right to live in a healthy environment. The next one is the right to redressal. So this is again, uh, this talks about the consumer courts and the different forums that we have, wherein when you when you need some help, you can go and seek compensation. And when your rights are getting infringed, you can always go and approach them. So that's the redressal that mechanism that we have. The seventh one is called the right to consumer education. So before you buy, you need to know exactly everything about what this product is all about. Um, so we need to have kind of an awareness session. Uh, the government has to actually do this awareness session, you know, talking about how consumers can uh, get benefited on different different products and what are the laws that are available, and educate them about how to buy the right product. So this is something that gives you absolutely rights to uh, absolutely fully right all kinds of rights to make sure that you get educated about the products. And the last one talks about the basic needs. Um, so anything that you need to have a good, decent, reasonable life in your day-to-day uh, -day activities, you should have rights to do that. And uh, so a lot of things here are the responsibility of a government and uh, but some of the organizations like consumer rights organizations that we have also will facilitate and help people to get uh, these rights to them um, so these are some rights that are there so we'll move on to consumer protection so this is another uh, important aspect we talked about consumer rights this is about uh, how you can protect the consumers in making sure that they get the right thing for the investments um, so at the bottom, you'll see a right to address redress mechanism. This is again about uh, the different redressal forums that are there. So we'll talk about those as well. Um, effective consumer organizations. So like I said, uh, not many organizations are operating in this space, but the off late, uh, in the last, I think, couple of years or probably in the last two, three years, you will see that uh, quite a few consumer organizations people have started. And uh, you know they all have different, different, uh, that's the, the theme is same. The goal is same. But the way they operate is very different. Like I talked about my organization, how it works. Similarly, there are different organizations. Uh, but now these kind of organizations have started coming up, which are acting as an interface between the government and the consumers. So for example, our organization is an interface, is a bridge which connects the consumers and the government. So in that way, we are there to help people. Uh, responsible business conduct, a lot of business ethics have to be followed. And uh, that's why we have certain laws about uh, everything that we, when people you know, buy and when people sell things, they have to come under a particular ambit of certain laws. They can't just be like selling things at their own will and wish. So this will help you to protect, to do a conducive business. Is there a question? Mr. Tawner has a question. Tawner, yeah. sorry. Uh, go through the slides pretty quickly, I think. Can we continue, please? I don't think that's the question. There was somebody who becoming unmuted. Please continue. OK, OK. Yeah. OK. Can Mr. Saur uh, uh, mute, please? Uh, I just joined. I, uh... I have no question at this moment. Let me see before closing. 
Sure, thank you. Okay. Um, next is about adequate consumer loss. Uh, we'll talk about the loss shortly and uh, effective law implementation and enforcement because uh, there, there could be a lot of laws. But do we have an uh, enforcement agency? How do we enforce it? We will look at that. And uh, a consumer has to be very aware. So the education, you know, the mechanism, how we can make sure the consumer knows everything is another aspect that we all have to work on. It includes the government and organizations like us. So these are, uh, you would see that there are like six different consumer protection options that are there. So we look at them a little bit in detail. Uh, the redress and the redressal mechanism, I already talked about the consumer forums that we have. Uh, like I said, there are three different consumer forum options that are available. I will also walk you through what are those three different organizations, uh, the government bodies, which will help you to you know, get justice. Consumer organizations, these are social organizations, like example, our organization, we work with the government uh, organization, we work with the government departments. So when I say government department, uh, just for the information purpose uh, for everybody here, uh, the consumer movement comes under the food and civil supplies department, consumer affairs and food and civil supply department. At the national level, uh, Mr. Uh, I think uh, I forgot the name of the minister, he's a union minister, Ram Vilas Paswan. He is the minister for Ram Vilas affairs at the national level. Right. So uh, it comes under his department and in Karnataka state uh, recently, uh, Mr. Uh, Gopalaya, uh, he's a minister for uh, Karnataka state uh, consumer affairs, uh, food and self supply. So it comes under that. So uh, these social organizations, uh, we get an option to work with these government bodies. We work with the, in the concern department and there's a principal secretary for that. He's an IS officer. So we all can work with them. Uh, the third is about uh, responsible business conduct. Uh, so a lot of ethical practices have to be followed when we do business. Uh, that's because we want to create a win-win situation for both vendors and consumers. So like I mentioned before, we are not there to harass shopkeepers and vendors. We are there to help them out. At the same time, when we see that they're not doing the job, they're not doing ethical business, we step in. Uh, the fourth one is about uh, enacting laws. And uh, good thing is about this particular uh, aspect is that uh, there are there are two different laws. And the last law, the latest law which came in into existence was in uh, 2019. And a lot of good updates have been done. And we'll look at what are the different updates that have happened. A very interesting updates that has happened in the latest law, which is about uh, 2019, when this whole act was uh, reframed. Uh, but otherwise, before that, there was an older act which talked about some good things. But again, the, the latest one has quite a few new things as well. We look at that. Um, then we there is an option of implementing and enforcement and uh, enforcement also are the responsibility of not just the government but also people like us and if there are any violations we have to help consumers to get justice we have to facilitate we have to talk to them understand and then facilitate that's what we do and the last one is about awareness so like i talked about uh, okay mr Saur, i think uh, there's some noise coming from your side if you could go on mute please No, so, I'm not talking. I'm just listening. I'm no, just no, please, listening. Sir, please go on mute. Phone. Can you please mute your phone, sir? Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. The last one is about consumer awareness that I talked about. So I think we have covered this in the previous slides as well. So these are the different consumer protection options that you have. Okay. Interesting concept before, during, and after. So plan to invest in the right product. So before you actually buy something, you need to plan accordingly. So you just can't step out of your home and say, okay, today I'm going to buy the buy a, let's say a television. But before you buy a television, have you done your homework? Have you thought about what is the right uh, kind of a brand that you need to invest? Do you know how much of budget do you have? And then uh, do you know what are the different options available in the space? Do you know what features you want? So that is the planning that you need to think about. And uh, during is, uh, when I say during, it means verify the right product is being bought. So when you step inside, let's say, you know, Pai, Giriyas, Adishwar, when you want to buy a, a television, are you, uh, you know, doing the right verification on the spot when you're buying this product that talks about during? And after is about validating that the product that you bought is good. So it talks about, you know, when you buy something and uh, when you take it home, have you bought the right product? How do you actually make sure that it's working fine? You need to offer that and uh, whether it is as per the expectation, you need to validate that. So verification validation, this is also an industry term that, that very much applies to this. So when, you, when you're buying things, you need to verify, but when you buy it, after buying, you need to validate. These two terms are pretty important. 
Uh, so uh, my request again. I think you need to go and read the line. Yeah. True. True. Yeah. Chandrakant, please continue. Please go ahead. Okay, I think uh, Saur sir is still uh, probably not on mute. So there could be some disturbance. Okay, I'll continue. Okay, so uh, quickly I'll walk you through what are the things as a consumer that you need to buy. So please you know, remember these when you step out your home, when you buy anything, I give an example of a television or a refrigerator, but when you want to buy anything which is of a lesser denomination or a bigger, you know, a lesser uh, cost or a bigger cost, you need to make sure that uh, you need to think of these options. The first thing, list the needs of the item. So when you want to buy something, you, you need to think whether you really need that. Check for the features that you need to buy, you know, do some Googling, understand what is that you want to buy, what are the different features that you're expecting. Shortlist the right brands. Just don't you know, look at one brand and uh, don't ignore the other brands. There could be brands of higher quality, there could be brands of medium quality, but the medium quality brands need not necessarily be of low quality. So you can actually look at them, uh, compare them, do a comparison. Shortlist at least four to five brands that you want to buy things of. Check for the prices, both online are very important because offline prices are not, we get a lot of complaints about this. Online prices are very different from offline price. So you will see that the offline prices are actually expensive more. Online prices, you get lots of discounts. So when you buy a, when you want to buy a laptop, when you want to buy a, any kind of a bigger items, which will cost you like 40, 50,000, please verify the offline price is going to be more three to 4,000 more and the online price is going to be very less. And that's because you will get lots of discounts. You'll get, you know, you'll get your HDFC card discount or ICC bank card discount, many such things. And uh, trust me, just a live example. I actually ordered a laptop on Flipkart. It's going to come next week for my own use. And the offline price is 54,000, but I am buying it for 42,000 online. And I have verified that this is the right thing that I wanted to buy. So, you know, a lot of people come to us and complain saying that in the offline prices are different and online prices are different. Yes, offline prices are going to be very expensive for you because online you get lots of discounts. So that has to be thought of. Quality first, price next, fancy last. A lot of people look at the beautiful things, the fancy, the decorated items, uh, the decorated photographs, and then they try to place orders. This can be both, you know, the things when you look at in the shop or when you look at online. The very first thing that you need to think of is the quality. And then the second one is the price because a lot of people buy uh, items which they think are low in cost, but they end up you know, buying a bad quality product. And that's when they start repenting and coming to us saying that I bought this thing because it was looking very fancy. It was looking nice. Price was less. But then finally we found that after one week, it's not working. So we always tell the people that, you know, don't look at the price as the only option. Even if you're paying a couple of rupees more, go for the right product, with, which has got the right quality. And the fancy should be the last. Don't look at the good things, the beautiful things which are wrapped up on that. It's only for marketing purpose. So don't look at that and go for it. So that's the advice that we have. So ask ex experts, check reviews and look around. Uh, before you buy, ask people who already bought it. Ask, check for the reviews online and look around you. Your friends would have bought that. Take some advice from them. So these are very important things that we all need to think when you buy products. So what happens when you step into a shop? When you go to a shop? Uh, finally, uh, Chandrakant, we would like to uh, you to share some knowledge on bill passed in the parliament and about the la uh, law relating to consumer rights and protection. Since we have reached to 555, I think if we can provide some information on that, and after that, we'll keep it open for the question and answers. Sure. So what I'll do is I'll uh, right away move to, so I'll also, you know, kind of if time permits, we'll come back to this. But I'll right away take you to a slide called consumer loss. Because I believe it's very oh. important. Uh, everybody should know this. And uh, so I'm going to talk about the two different laws that are available. So first one is the 2019 law. Uh, but below that is, you can see there's one more law called the Consumer Protection Act 1986. So let me take a minute about this 1986 law to talk about it. I'll talk about the 2019 later. So this 2000, uh, this Consumer Protection Act of 1986 called CORPA. This is an act of the Parliament of India enacted in 86, 1986, uh, you know, many years back to protect the interests of consumers. It was later, later replaced by this Consumer Protection Act of 2019, which I'll talk about it. Um, so this 1986 act, it is made for establishment of consumers, councils and other authorities. So they came up with this forum. So before that, probably there were no forums to redress the consumers. So this law actually, when it came, it helped the consumers to actually set up a grievance agency. It helped to set up this consumer courts and consumer forums to you know, help the consumers. 
This act was passed in the, in the country in October 1986 and it came into existing as a law in December 24th, 24th December 1986. Um, so that's that's a very important production law that we had, Consumer Protection Act 1986. And this actually laid the foundation for all the consumer uh, needs, consumer rights, consumer protections, consumer awareness. So this law is a very elaborate law. I'm not going to talk about in depth. This is a very big law. And uh, you can actually Google and search. You will you'll see tons of information about this law and very, you know, very strong basis of uh, the foundation that it laid within our country. So you would imagine that, you know, since the time of our independence, 1947 to 1986, we never had any laws. There, could, there was just people talking about things randomly, but nobody actually came up with the law. 1986 was the very first law in a country when we all felt that the, you know, the leaders, the country felt that we need to bring a consumer protection law. That's when we started this. But again, 1986 was pretty, pretty old. So that's when, again, as and when the awareness, as and when you know, people like our organizations came into existence, you know, they went back to the government and they said that we need better laws, we need some enhancements, we need some kind of new things to be added. So that's when this Consumer Protection Act of 2019 was passed. Uh, so it it actually replaces the existing, the older law that was there in 1986. So the Consumer Protection Bill, which was 2019, was introduced in the Lok Sabha on 8th of July 2019. Like I talked about Mr. Ram Vilas Paswan, who is the Minister of Consumer Affairs, Food and Public Distribution. And on 6th of August 2019, it was passed as a consumer production bill so the law the the particular uh, bill which was into which was introduced came into existence on 6th august 2019 it became a law and uh, since then it has been actually handling a lot of latest things that are happening in the consumer movement and the consumer space so the next slide talks about the comparison you will see that uh, you know, very interesting aspects in 2019 act which came up last year which is as early as you know as recent as last year uh, so Flipkart, Amazon, Snapdeal, a lot of things have come up in the last 10 years, last five years. You will see that these kind of companies have, uh, you know, they have, uh, they have been in the existence. And uh, a lot of laws actually are there to protect us from these kind of purchases. So what you see there on those uh, you know, beautiful photos that they upload when you go to Amazon or Flipkart, when you buy things, uh, they will show you very beautiful photos. But actually when you order things and when you get it in your hand, you will see that's very, very different from what you actually saw on the website. So that's when we need some protection against those kind of uh, things that are happening. So it covers 2019 law covers your e-commerce e transactions. I'm talking about this you know, Amazon, Flipkart and those kind of things. Enhancement of regional jurisdiction. So every jurisdiction, every consumer court had a particular option of only able to service a particular number, number of amount of options that you can go and claim for. Example, if you had bought for something for 10 lakh, and if you want to go for a particular uh, local court, they will say, no, this is not under our jurisdiction because the, the amount of the item is around 10 lakhs. You need to go to a higher court. So now that has been changed, we will see the different options. So they have fixed the amount limit based on the product that you have bought. And based on the price of the amount, now we can go to different different uh, particular redressal forums. So every redressal forums will address a product of a particular amount. And uh, the state forum, the national forum, and the district forums have got a, a fixed amount on which number of products, uh, the cost of the product that it can handle. You filing of complaints, you don't have to go and you know write, take a paper, you know, write it, and then file a complaint. You can do an online filing of your complaints. The government, government portals available now where you can do an e-filing. Uh, the, the new government agency, Central Consumer Protection Authority, has come into force. This is still not uh, probably like not known to everybody, but uh, apart from the consumer forums and the redressal options that we have and the consumer courts, this is another central agency called uh, Consumer Protection Authority. This is a government body which has been established uh, now. And uh, product liability and penal consequences. So uh, the product is going to be loved. when you buy a product, it's not just the shopkeeper. It knows just the manufacturer, even the service provider is now going to be liable under this product liability. Those things have been included in the current law. Unfair trade practices. So uh, it could be about, you know, for example, when you buy a product, they'll ask you for your mobile number, your address. What if they go and sell that to others and what if they pass on that, those details to others? And you will see, you know, calls on credit cards or calls on some, you know, things coming up, unknown spam calls coming to you. And you'll be wondering, you know, how did those people get your number? So some people have been doing this. Some people, shopkeepers have been passing on your personal information to other agencies uh, for marketing purpose. So this law will protect you against those as well. Penalties for misleading advertisement. So you will see an advertisement like I talked about uh, things, online advertisements or newspaper advertisements, talk about very fancy things or nice colorful photographs. But when you buy, either the item will be faulty or things will don't work beyond a particular time or you will get misled by what you see and what you buy. 
and uh, provision for alternative dispute resolution because uh, there are some uh, you know some uh, agencies now which are going to be an alternative option so earlier we had this uh, redressal forms but apart from that this will also give us some alternate dispute resolution options you can actually go for an arbitration you can go sit and you know talk with those agencies and get them resolved the very key highlights of this 2019 keeping in mind the current trend and the current things happening in the industry that's how they have come up with and if you look at the comparison about the 1986 law and 2019 law so in 86 law there was no separate uh, regulator so now we have a central consumer protection agency which has come up um so complaints on the left hand side you will see that in the older law we had complaints could be filed in a consumer court uh, wherever the seller's office is located which means if you buy it in bangalore you have to only go to the bangalore court and apply uh, but uh, in the latest law complaint can be filed in a consumer court where the complaint resides so it, it depends on now the latest law says where your residence is you can go to that residence areas jurisdiction consumer court and file otherwise in the previous law you have to go to the jurisdiction of the seller but not the buyer but now as a buyer you can actually go to a particular court which is close to your jurisdiction uh, product liability uh, earlier we saw that consumer court approach a civil court but not consumer so consumers could approach a civil court but there was no particular consumer court as such but consumers can see compensation uh, for harm caused by a product or service so earlier it was just a product uh but now even for the service and also for the you know, after sales when i talk about service it's again after sales service and then also about uh, the manufacturers the service providers the sellers all are going to be coming under the ambit of this 2019 law uh district courts uh can handle up to 20 lakh worth of uh, purchases that you have made uh, state courts between 20 lakh and 1 crore and national courts up to 1 crore these are all the value of the amount that you buy and uh, that was in the previous law but now even the district court can handle up to 1 crore worth of products that you would have bought so you don't have to go to the state and national commissions for that you can go to your district court local courts and do that any commerce was not there before in, up to you know when the 1986 law was enforced there was no uh, option to cover these amazon flipkart and those kind of people but now all rules uh, related to e-commerce companies are there and uh, earlier there was no option of mediation but now you have an option of mediation you can go for a settlement you don't have to do everything within the court you can talk to those companies and sit outside the court and do a mediation so these are some options that you would see in the 2019 law oh it um, is so really I wonderful uh, sharing of your knowledge it is something that it is a time for us jago grahak jaho jago right so we just move on to the questions from the audience chandrakant so we'll just yeah. wait i request all the audience to post their questions on the chat box so i so that i can read out uh, one by one sure so in precise in today's fast changing world consumer movement has been steadily gaining moment momentum i believe right yeah that's right and it is really wonderful to know that today's call is more focused on the consumer rights and protection jago grahak jago very nice so any questions from the audience uh, so that we can uh, uh, clarify with uh, mr chandrakant yes yeah, i have seen uh, yeah go ahead yeah yeah so what are the rights is available to citizens with regard to filing a petition for supply of kaveri water to all residents in the locality okay so kaveri water the question, uh, chandrakant yeah 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 this is regarding the kaveri water facility to be supplied to all the yeah. residents what are rights available yeah. yes okay uh, so uh, as you all know bwssb is the authority which uh, supplies kaveri water to the entire bangalore city so uh, as per the uh, latest uh, notification from bwssb the right to get access to kaveri water has been provided to every single bangalorean which means every bangalorean can go approach bwssb apply for kaveri water connection and in fact the government has been encouraging people to go for kaveri water they are discouraging people not to go for the bore wells and wherever there are bore wells you know the people are you know the government is enforcing that you know they are giving uh, they are actually charging more for them and saying that they should uh, that will deplete the ground water level that's why they are encouraging not the for the people not to use bore wells and go for kaveri water connection and they have been doing uh, i was part of certain drives from bwssb where they wanted to reach out to citizens as an outreach program 
and uh, collect applications and distribute the applications, fill them and uh, submit it back to BWSLB. So it's a it's a it's a very basic right of all Bangaloreans that you need to have a BWSLB water connection, and the government is very much in favor of giving these connections at the earliest. So if anybody has any issues, they can reach out to us and we can work with BWSLB to make sure that your applications are processed and the connections are given faster. We have Hello. one more question. Yeah. Hello. Mentioned about can I ask a question? Healthy environment. Hello, Does can I ask a question? The fall type of waste in our water locality. I'm sorry, Indra. I think uh, it wasn't so clear. Can you please repeat? Yeah, so I'll read out the question. One of the questions yeah. you mentioned that, about uh, rights for healthy environment. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, can everyone hear me? Yes, Amya, please okay. go ahead. Yeah, one of the questions is the hospitals charge more as a package uh, for various services. One of the example being the same hospital cost only 25,000, but the hospital charges are much more. Is there a way to avoid this kind of payment? How does one go about that? Yes, so uh, we are getting a lot of cases against hospital as well. So my request is when you go to a hospital, they would have different different packages. And you would also have your insurance and some people would not have insurance. So whether you have insurance or not, I would request that you first check out the packages that they have. They give you things as a package for hospitalization. And uh, their packages, again, depending on the premier hospitals or the normal uh, moderate hospital, it all differs. So before the admission, you need to make sure that you are in line or you agree to those charges which are applicable. And there have been instances where the doctors have been, I mean, the hospital has been charging uh, enormously for certain things which are, which we felt was not relevant. Um, we have been talking to such uh, management and making sure that the prices are reduced. But uh, healthcare has been one of the major areas, major concerns for consumers because you actually end up paying a very hefty bill when you get uh, admitted to hospital. So my request is, you know, talk to those management people when you get admitted at the time of admission. Uh, check out their package prices and if you feel it is worth, please go. Example, for example, let me tell you, Manipal, Cent Manipal Hospital, if you go there, you know, the charges are pretty exorbitant. But whereas if you go to, you know, Malige Hospital and those kind of moderate hospitals, the same treatment is given to you at a very moderate cost. And especially if you have, uh, you know, options like insurance, uh, you can much you can much have a much cleaner and better experience uh, with those kind of things. But yes, we have been getting complaints. And if you find that any hospital is charging you, uh, you know, uh, uh, the unreasonable cost and which has not been communicated to you, please bring out to our notice. But I would request that before you actually get these, uh, get into kind of an admission, you need to understand whether you are in line with the cost that the hospital is charging. Because most of the time when you talk to the hospital management, uh, they say that we have told the uh, patients upfront about the charges. And uh, once the bill is generated, now they're coming in you know, creating issues. So we don't want even hospitals to kind of, uh, we don't want to harass the hospitals as well. At the same time, we want every person to know that these are the charges, and if you're okay with that, please go ahead with the admission. Can I ask a question now? Yes, sir, please go ahead. Uh, this is about real estate business. A lot of developers, they book plots, and they don't develop, they don't take CC, and uh, even sometimes they don't do registration, and they are not cooked by any law or anything. Can you highlight or brief something on uh, such kind of issues? Yeah, so a couple of things uh, when it comes to real estate, one is about the land, one is about uh, the buildings, for example, the apartments. So today we just received a complaint saying that uh, one of the big builders in Bangalore was supposed to hand over the apartment in 2016, but it's almost been four years and the apartment is still not ready. Um, so off late, the real estate industry is suffering because of the COVID and other things. But even otherwise, uh, I don't think any of the you know, people, these builders would have given you the apartment on the time that they were committed. Same thing applies to even lands. A lot of builders who are there are selling plots around city, outside the city outskirts, and uh, you know they take advance amount, they delay the registration and all that. Uh, so this amounts to cheating and uh, we will work with you to go file a police complaint because it's a cheating. It comes under 420 cheating fraud uh, saying that they have promised you something not given it. Uh, so we will work with the so when you go to a consumer court, such kind of things are more often directed to the civil police, uh, the crime police, because it is also covered under the 420 law, uh, the IPC sections that we have. So it comes under fraud. 
So if you have given the money to buy a plot and if you're stuck and then the builder is not ready to register or there's a delay there, you can always uh, go there, ask them to give in writing saying that, yes, uh, we are, they're, they're having trouble giving it to you. If they don't do that, you can always take our help and file a police complaint. Uh, further, uh, how the RERA Act and your uh, Consumer Act, how they control such kind of things separately or uh, one is assigned and one is not assigned? Consumer rights are always there to protect you. But at the same time, when you buy these things, when you want to invest in a plot, you need to make sure that you do some homework, get the legal verification done, whether that particular area is coming under the ambit of law. It's all, you know, conversion is done and those kind of things are taken care. But otherwise, uh, we suggest that uh, though the rights and the laws are there to protect you, uh, but it is our duty as well to make sure that before we go and get into those kind of deals, uh, we also do some homework uh, to understand whether we are getting into the right deal. Uh, the, uh, the major thing is the legal verification. That's when we find that people are not very much bothered about the legal part. When they when they want to buy a plot, they just go and look at the beautiful space around and then they start investing. But the legal verification of the plot is very much important. We have consumer rights laws to protect you for if you're buying something on a plot or an apartment or a vacant plot. But at the same time, a lot of people get cheated. And uh, when I say cheating, it's basically the delay part. So there are some uh, builders I know who, are, who have genuinely delayed because of various reasons, because of you know, market conditions, but they're very much committed. So some cases that we have handled, the, the, the builders have said that they're very much committed to deliver the plot or deliver the apartment flats to the consumers. At the same time, they have highlighted their issues. Example, labor. Example, the COVID situation. Example, you know, the cost of the thing has gone up. So they are struggling to raise funds. They also would have taken loans, huge loans from banks. So if there's a delay, we need to get a written commitment saying that uh, the delays are okay. And uh, it's in the interest of the consumers, we are ready to wait for a particular duration. But otherwise, there are lots of examples, example, Maharashtra, things like Amrapali, and uh, there are some uh, builders, and even in Gurgaon, in Noida, where uh, the people have gone against the builder and also won cases. So it, it more rightly qualifies into the civil courts more than consumer courts because uh, consumer courts handle mainly the products and services but this this particular thing ambit comes under a, under the law of cheating so that's when uh, the bigger courts the general civil courts will be able to handle it much better okay thank you one more uh, two two questions i'd like to combine into one uh, yeah. when you said there is a right to healthy environment does it mean uh, the include it does it mean clearing of all the waste in the ward or locality and also, does it mean it is a right to public spaces, for example, pavements, clean parks, etc.? Exactly. So this right to environment, uh, healthy environment that I'm showing here on the screen, which is point number five, it talks about uh, this clean environment and uh, the safe environment around us. So this, this also includes our Swachh Bharat initiative, which means uh, we need to keep our surrounding clean, just like the way we keep our houses clean and homes clean. We need to. So I'm, I'm heading Swachh Bharat for one of the organizations which is a resident welfare association and I am in charge for implementing Swachh Bharat in my area, which has around 400 houses. So we do this once in a once in a month. So even the government, so we are working with BBMP, we are working with several other organizations to keep our area clean. And our area has been, uh, you know, been awarded as one of the cleanest areas in the last two, three years continuously that we have been working on. So uh, we work with BBMP. It is the right of the government to provide us a clean environment. They have to have these people like, you no. Know, we work with power karmikas. Uh, they actually help us to keep our areas clean. And uh, it could be parks. It could be things of the public interest that are there that is being used more often by the public. So it is the right of every citizen, every consumer, each of us to go demand for a clean space. And if we see things are not getting cleaned, we can work with BBMP to implement those things. I have a question. Uh, do we have any remedies where there is no bills? For example, one question raised by Venki: Water bottle should not be charged more, but they charge for uh, they charge for refrigeration. This comes without a bill. How to resolve? What is the remedy for this? Similarly, for the public services, what mm -hmm. we access? For example, payments, parks. Okay, so a lot of things when you buy, you don't get a bill. So that's very, that's absolutely fine. As long as they are charging you for the MRP, you don't have to keep a bill. 
and even if there are no pills it doesn't mean that the vendors need not be penalized even when things are without bills uh, so when i say without bills it could be for smaller items but uh, you would see that a board written at every particular point of sale uh, at least in certain reasonable places when you buy that uh, please demand a bill if not your product is free so you will see such kind of boards that's because we are we have, we have been working with those organizations or companies to implement that bill is an uh, is a basic right of a consumer when you buy something they have to be provided with a bill which is a basic right so uh, example when you travel in an auto rickshaw you don't get a bill when you buy a you know, 10 rupee or 20 rupee water bottle you don't get a bill and if somebody is charging you for refrigeration please bring it out to us because they are not supposed to charge anything extra for refrigeration if you want to buy a water bottle which is warm or which is cold which is refrigerated the cost is same so there has been i know that you know when during my you know earlier days younger days i have faced this situation uh, when we started this consumer organization we did talk about this option saying when you buy a soft drink uh, the normal one is lesser but when you want a colder one that is going to be like 2 rupees more so we have in fact uh, paid and bought during our younger days when we didn't know about these consumer rights but now if you find that a particular shopkeeper is paying is asking you more for a refrigerated item compared to a normal item you please tell him that you you have an every right to question him and it's not that all the time consumer rights or consumer laws will come and help you out on the field because you're all you know, spread out you're all there in your in your day to day life dealing with people and dealing with uh, shopkeepers so you have every right to talk to that person and say that you cannot be charging more for refrigeration the mrp is fixed i, I think i had the slide which was talking about the mrp it is fixed it is fixed by the manufacturer it is fixed by the person who is producing the product and anything ab- about that is a is a legal issue so you can actually always have a right to you know file a complaint if anything is charged beyond mrp uh, so my request is if you come across such things you first fight for your right and if you need help we are there with you you just give us a call we'll be there we'll come to the shop along with you and we will take necessary action against them if not the the things that we have done in the past is we have worked with the bbmp to cancel the trade license of such people who are charging you more than the mrp or charging you for refrigeration that's really fantastic Uh, any more questions? Yeah, I'm audible. Uh, yes, you are audible. Please go. Uh, hi, thanks. Hey, Mr. Chandrika, uh, very nice talk and thanks a lot for your time. Uh, you, you guys are doing a wonderful job. Hi. Uh, uh, this is Anish here. So I had a question regarding the rights of a flat owner within an apartment association. Uh, this is specifically for those registered under KSR in 1960. so our flat owners uh, individual flat owners can they be considered as consumers because we pay for various services and products such as water housekeeping electricity etc within the apartment association are, and are we entitled to information uh, uh, such as right to view bills etc and documentation selection of vendors right to choose basically right where you say right to free choice of goods and services so Are we do we have the right to be part of the process where the vendors are selected or chosen? It's a very valid question. Uh, we we both you and me are in the same boat. I also live in an apartment. I also live in a flat. So I also pay my maintenance charges. And you and me have every right to uh, choose the vendor, uh, be a part of the selection process, uh, demand things. When you are paying something money, you pay your service charges, you pay your maintenance charges. So you have every right to know how things are being utilized. You need to know the breakup as well. So uh, I live in a small apartment. Uh, now our uh, we have around eight flats and then uh, four floors. So it's not like a prestige or a, a monthly where you have hundreds of uh, apartments. But I've seen in bigger apartments people do have these questions because sometimes the apartment owners association, uh, you know, the secretary and other people they do not uh, keep things transparent. Uh, they kind of you know keep things to themselves or within the office where steam. Uh, but every single person who is living in an apartment, who is living in a flat, has access to the should have access to every single information for which they are paying. so unless you are paying you can uh, always go and question them but otherwise if you're not part of uh, the you know the process where you're not contributing monetarily anything sometimes it becomes difficult to go and question them but otherwise even for uh, for the purpose of uh, tra- being transparent you can even if you're not paying anything as a service you can still go and question them but assuming you're already paying you have every right to go and be a part of the process for everything including selection of vendors and everything for example in our apartment we are we have vendors we have a diesel generator and uh, we pay money for that so we know who is who's right vendor to choose and who gives us the right service we have a lift we have a maintenance person for that we go and select the vendor so we are part of very much the owners are part of very much into the system you always have the right to do it and if somebody is not allowing you to do it you have to uh, my request is all of you uh, when you actually have an issue please make sure that it is documented it is in the written format if you are doing things orally 
it will not be calculated it will not be considered as an option which you have uh, chosen your right to go and talk about because it will not have any evidence it will not have any proof so my request is anything that you believe that you want to fight it out in the right manner considering your rights your laws uh, to protect you please keep it in writing yeah just to completely follow. agree documentation of the issues or grievances is very much important a similar thing uh, i have a question here can we hold bbmp accountable for condition of payments parts roads is it really possible and have you handled any cases in your previous uh, one or two years any issues okay uh, uh, very uh, very live example very happening example is that bda and uh, bangalore development authority and bbmp which is bangalore bangalore maganagar palike are the two nodal agencies premier agencies of uh, the government of karnataka uh, uh, are to implement the right uh, places around us to uh, have a healthy space to have a beautiful place making bangalore more beautiful uh, at the same time bda is responsible for certain flyovers parks and maintenance of certain junctions whereas bbmp is more often into the civic things uh, so we the both are equally responsible um, so you would uh, indraji like you mentioned about myself being a part of the lake development committee so i was part of the bbmp's advisory committee on lake development and uh, what we did was along with bbmp see bbmp is there as an agency but we all have to work with them we all have to help them different organizations every individual have to come and work with them uh, there could be many issues within bbmp they would not have the right things to uh, the, the technical knowledge the volunteers people to work with them so we all have to contribute so what we did was we actually worked with bbmp to outsource some of the lakes some of the junctions some of the you know traffic points some of the roads to uh, external companies including it companies we went and spoke to the it companies and said that why don't you adopt a particular junction or traffic signal or a lake and that's when a lot of people came and then they said okay we'll put our branding we'll put our logos but we'll maintain this and the cost is going to be taken care of by ourselves so we did work with big companies like epro infosys and they were very happy to adopt certain lakes parks and they did all the maintenance so even today when you go to mg road or to any particular prominent junctions you will see that the parks the junctions are all uh, you will see the logos of the companies which are maintaining them so uh, bbmp s yes, more of civic and bd also more of development both these agencies are equally responsible if you feel that they are not equally you know they are not doing their job uh, you can always talk to the commissioner uh, mr b h anil kumar uh, who is an is officer a very good person and uh, recently he has been handling the covid situation very well so he is a very dynamic officer you can always raise a complaint to him and uh, he will assign that to the local uh, assistant commissioners to handle those things okay and since you have told us that uh, any issues any grievances or anything where we really require the help of yours so we can reach out to you so do you uh, what is the process you normally uh, take care or is there any consultation fees or how or is a other uh, solution alternative for that okay so people can reach out to us uh, this is the slide that i am pr presenting here um, so we have just started the development of a website called www.ksro.org it is being developed uh, we are in the process of putting more and more contents there we do have a helpline number that you can see on the screen 63631723 this is a helpline number you can reach out to us this is for complaints this is for any suggestions improvements that you want to tell us that you want to register with us and we do have a email id ksro karnataka at gmail.com you can actually send us a written complaint you can send us some suggestions things that you want us to do uh, things that you want certain government agencies to improve uh, we will take it up with the concerned authorities and our head office is in bangalore kumar samuel layout uh, that's where we are located and the address is mentioned here we are in the second stage near the anand sagar engineering college that's where we are located we are also on facebook karnataka cro and then on twitter as well at uh, kr state cro so these are some options that you can actually reach out to this is basically for consumers um so who want to reach out to us for their grievances and other issues but uh, earlier i talked about two ways how you can register with us i talked about registered members so we have a registration fees of 1000 rupees which is a one time lifetime registration fees so you have to fill up a form and uh, pay us the money and then uh, we will give you an id card uh, saying that you are a member of consumer rights and you can align with us we do have our monthly meetings uh, happening on third or fourth sunday of every month Uh, we do it in open space we do in uh, indoor space we do in outdoor spaces 
all across Bangalore, we do meetings. And uh, that's when you can come and participate in our meeting. You can join us as registered members. The registration fee is 1,000 rupees, which is one time in lifetime. And if you do not want to be a registered member, you can always be a general member. And general membership is absolutely free. There are no charges for that. For that, you just have to share your uh, WhatsApp number. And then uh, we will add you in our WhatsApp group, which is a general membership group. And uh, we will keep you posted about various activities, events, programs. You can come and participate. Whereas registered members get more privileges. They get ID cards. They can also become office bearers. You know, they can be a part of a decision-making process. They get more, more better privileges. So these are two ways how you can work with us uh, as registered members and general members. But otherwise, for all public, for all consumers, this is the information that I'm putting on my screen, uh, which will help you to reach out to us with your uh, suggestions, grievances, complaints, and other things. Thank you. Thank you so much for your valuable inputs, Chandrakant. We will definitely reach out to you. And I hope that there, is, there are no more questions, I believe. So uh, shall we uh, wind up here? Yeah. Uh, I, if you could take uh, one last question from me that's there on the chat window. Yes, Pratik. Please go ahead. Pratik, can you go ahead? Pratik, please ask your question. Hello, hello. Just a moment. Yeah, yeah it's on the chat window. Hold on. Yeah, that is uh, uh, a lot of shopkeepers charge uh, plus one or two rupees extra per milk packet of Nandini. And uh, is that even allowed? Because I've seen a lot of shopkeepers charge this, and it's become a norm. They think that it's normal. Uh, is that allowed too? No, absolutely not. They are not supposed to charge anything this more than. This question is already uh, answered, yeah. but I think Chandrakant yeah. can really brief it again. I believe in one Absolutely minute, not, uh, yes. my friend. Yes. Yeah, absolutely not. Nothing, anything beyond MRP. Um, so I have a Nandini milk uh, milk parlor shop myself, which I've rented out. So I have a tenant who runs a Nandini milk shop, and uh, I buy milk from him. So absolutely nothing beyond the MRP that uh, they can charge. And if they're charging it, you can always ask them why are they charging anything more than the MRP. And absolutely no reason can justify their excess thing that they're charging. Uh, but my request is, please do, in case if you're being charged, please ask them for what reason they're doing it. They're not supposed to do it. If they continue to charge, you can actually bring it out to us. Uh, I know people at uh, the KMF. My uncle was a director of marketing, Mr. Ravi Kumar. He just retired uh, at the KMF uh, Valley Federation. And we can bring out, I know the chairman also, uh, who is a MLA uh, in the current government, who is the chairman of KMF. So we can actually get their license cancelled. That's the worst case I'm talking about. But we will talk to them. We'll talk to the shopkeepers. You please give us a complaint. We'll talk to them. The worst case is we can get their uh, milk license cancelled if they continue to charge more. This this includes the Kirana shops as well, right? Yeah, every single shop. I just give an example of milk, but uh, this includes all the Kirana shops. Thank you very much. I will. I think I will get back to you because in our area, this is pretty much a norm for every shop. Please tell so them the I, trade yeah, license will I, I be cancelled. First of all, Kirana sure. shops sometimes they don't have a registered trade license. They are all operating uh, illegally. They are, and if, even if they have a trade license, if they are charging anything more than MRP, their trade license will be gone. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Chandrakan. There, you've been really valuable. Your uh, session has been really valuable today. Indraji, any other questions? Yep. Yes, yes. I think we are done. Uh, this is really uh, what you have really said uh, in your initial talk is correct. This is a road which uh, not many people has traveled. And this is something time for us to understand and really realize the rights of the consumer. Uh, more than procuring the things, we have to understand how to protect our rights as well. Thank you so much for sharing your knowledge. And we will definitely get in touch with you. And hope the, everyone has enjoyed this session. Thank you so much, Indrakan, for Thank your you, valuable Indraji. time. It was, well. a, it was a pleasure, Thank Indraji. Thanks you. for the opportunity. Thanks for your party. And then uh, thanks to all the participants. I saw lots of participants today. And I'm sure you'll have multiple follow-up questions. So please do reach out to me uh, and then talk to Indraji as well to get my details. And we're always there to help you out. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you, Chandrakan ji. Great session. Thank you. You will receive a link to give us your feedback. Thank you. Please do answer that. Thanks. Thank you. Take care.